Good day everyone. Today we will be discussing the different types of culture systems in aquaculture. So in this topic you will be understanding what are the different culture systems for the fresh, brackish, and marine waters. And also you will be acknowledging some of the modern advances for different culture systems, not just in the Philippines but in the other countries as well. And uh, we will also be touching some of the historical perspective of the dif different um, developments and progresses of this um, traditional culture systems. So previously we have discussed the introduction of aquaculture wherein you were able to define or we were able to define the word aquaculture and also explain the different classifications of aqu aquaculture according to the different uh, species being cultured and also the different systems being utilized and the different uh, environments wherein these aquaculture commodities are being raised and also you are able to differentiate the different aquaculture uh, I mean differentiate the aquaculture from the capture fisheries and also you were able to discuss the milestones of aquaculture development so those are our topics from the previous modules and in this module, as I've said, we will be touching a little bit of the historical perspective of the culture systems and the uh, culture systems and their sustainable sites for installations wherein you will be tasked to discuss the origins of this uh, origins and development of the culture systems for, for this aquaculture facility and also identify the suitable species and sites for the culture systems. Um, also the advances in culture systems. So, our mode of delivery and this one is still asynchronous uh, this this is a youtube youtube video and you will also be tasked or you will also be um, tasked to answer the google form which is accessible in this uh, link so going back to our discussion again this is the second module of the aquaculture which is the types and cul of culture systems so as a form of introduction, um, where or uh, when did the aquaculture have started? So aquaculture is basically a tradition of about 4,000 years ago in China. No? Uh, in 1949, there was a large-scale aquaculture began in China, specifically cultivating different uh, carp species involving common carp or the Cyprinus carpio, this one. And uh, the... This is basically the first cultured species in China. And another uh, type of carp that was cultivated in China was Croatian carp, which is the Car Car Caracios auratus. And secondly, a uh, thirdly rather is the mud carp or the Serena molitorella. So this one. And uh, also in the 1958, there was already development of artificial spawning of this um, carp species and part of which were the big head carps or otherwise known as the Aristicteus nobilis and the silver carp as well was artificially spawned in control conditions which are uh, hypophthalmic hypo uh, hypo ts molitrix so take note of these scientific names because you will be oh, you will be encountering these scientific names in the google forms as our second post test so uh, first type of culture system is basically the brackish water fish pond so the brackish water fish pond is the earliest fish pond take note of that this is basically the earliest fish pond it originated in the island of madura or the east java it was um, locally termed as tambak or embankment and it started in the philippines way back in 1521 to 1921 it started in Mactan Cebu. So as you can see here, these are basically the brackish water fish ponds, aerial shots of the brackish water fish ponds in the Philippines. So that's first. Another is uh, basically the, what we call as the pond culture. Pond culture basically is limited to only uh, fresh water. No? This is basically limited to fresh water. So this is the earliest form of aquaculture dating back to 1400s to 1137 before Christ. This is considered to be the most popular and the most important fish farming 
agriculture system. So as you can see here, this is um, earthen embankment as we have defined previously in our previous modules. So in close uh, enclosure using an earthen, no, earthen embankment. So this is limited to freshwater environments only. And then uh, we have here the valley culture. So what is this valley culture, by the way? Valley culture is the most ancient forms of aquaculture in the Mediterranean region in 1960s. So this valley culture is basically used to exploit seasonal migrations of some species in the, to the sea, uh, from the sea into lagoons by preventing the fish from returning to the sea. So some of the species being cultivated in this or the target species for valley culture are eels, the sea bass, the sea bream, sole and mullet. So these are basically the target species for valiculture. Again, uh, valiculture is to exploit the seasonal migrations of some fish species from the sea into lagoons. So this basically prevents the fish from returning to the sea. So uh, that is valiculture. Another is um, what we call as the brush part. So again, this is a very traditional way of cultivating fish. The brass park is a traditional form of low-technology aquaculture which is practiced in coastal lagoons and brackish water in many areas of the world. This is done by placing vegetation in the water areas to attract uh, either fish, shrimps, crabs, and many other forms of aquatic animals that is being cultivated and harvested later on. And this is fished periodically, usually by encircling uh, encirclement. So uh, as you can see here, these are I think uh, people in Thailand um, using their uh, vegetations, these vegetations be, be attracting uh, different species of a uh, fish. So they are gathering this is fish species. And then another is uh, floodplain fisheries. So the floodplain fisheries is a seasonal activity depending on the duration of the and amount of flood filling in the low area. So sometimes this is uh, done in the, near the river banks or uh, sometimes near the river mouths. So this is properly timed to coincide with the seasonality of the fisheries and the water level of the floodplain. So as you can see here, these are people um, utilizing the floodplains for fisheries whenever there will be a higher water level and there will be a seasonal uh, season for that specific uh, fish in that certain locality. And then another is this aqua silviculture. This is very popular especially in the Panay Islands. In fact these pictures were taken uh, um, I think in Navas or uh, I think in Aklan, somewhere in Aklan. So what's aquasilviculture? Aquasilviculture is the rearing and growing of fish and other aquatic organisms in enclosed sections within the mangrove areas to enhance fisheries production in the wild. So basically you're growing um, fish or any other organisms, may it be either fin fish, um, mud crabs, mollusks, um, other crustaceans or many other uh, aquatic species within the mangrove areas without harming the mangrove areas so basically this is to enhance the fisheries production from the wild the difference of aquasilviculture from sea ranching is that aquasilviculture are enclosed meaning to say there is an enclosure sea ranching is basically just a stock enhancement take note of that because we will deal or we will discuss what is uh, stock enhancement later in this video so again, aquasilviculture is just a rearing and growing of fish and other uh, aquatic organisms in enclosed sections within the mangrove areas just to enhance the fisheries production in the wild. So that's aquasilviculture. And then another is mariculture. This is very popular to everybody, I think to everybody. As you can see here in this uh, slide, uh, you can, we can see some of the modern advances for the mariculture. Now, when we define mariculture, it is just a specialized branch of aquaculture involving the cultivation of marine organisms in seawater, including um, either fish tanks, fish ponds, raceways, cages, and pens. So, as you can see here, there are a variety of culture units that is being utilized in this uh, specialized branch of aquaculture. 
So as you can see here, this is a race. Uh, this is a raceway, and this is uh, basically Norwegian fish cages or Norwegian aquaculture fish cage, and this is a submersible uh, fish cage. And this is, if you are familiar to this one, this is uh, Norway uh, Pacific, the uh, Norway rig uh, fish cage rig. So this is the largest aquaculture fish farm in the world. This was deployed in um, Norway, I guess. And this is once again the traditional fish pen. So there are a variety of uh, types of culture systems being used for uh, the mariculture. So uh, again, a specialized branch of aquaculture cultivating organisms in the seawater. And then uh, we have here again, as I have mentioned previously, the sea ranching. Sea ranching involves introducing juveniles either hatch reproduced or wild caught into the natural environment where they are allowed to grow without containment or structure. So as I, we have already been differentiated earlier, the difference between sea ranching and aquaselviculture, the difference is that the sea ranching is without containment, without enclosure. So just you're just enhancing the wild stocks in that certain fishing ground. So suitable species of this uh, type of um, aquaculture system or sea cucumbers, scallops, abalone, and some other, um, uh, shall we say, benthic organisms that are not very much mobile. So as you can see here, these are actually this is the stacking of ab this is the stacking of abalone in in somewhere in Panay, and this is basically the stacking of uh, fingerlings in in the Lake Lanao. This was taken in Facebook. So that's uh, basically sea ranching, and then we have here, oh, excuse me, we have here the right the seaweed farming. So the seaweed farming, uh, far basically mainly composed of the farming of Yukuma or or the red red algae started in 1960s. So this is a little bit of the historical perspective on. How did the uh, seaweed farming started in the Philippines? So it started in 1960s, and it was used as a human food and uh, also a source of phycocolloid, particularly carrageenan, which is the extract that can be taken um, from the eucuma itself. So these are photos of Caphaphycus alvarezae and eucuma spinosum. So uh, these are local type. Um, Carrageenan and this is a cup of type Carrageenan. So these are uh, more, more photos of the Yukuma. And then there are also seaweeds that are being cultivated in the Philippines, but uh, it has uh, faced or encountered different problems involving, um, uh, including ice ice disease. So I think you have already heard what is ice ice disease, but uh, let me just uh, have a quick explanation or definition of what is ice ice disease and how it is being caused by certain physical parameters of the environment. So ice ice disease is a phenomenon caused by low salinity, uh, low temperature, and light intensity. So kapag uh, mababa yung salinity natin, uh, kapag may mga freshwater intrusion, and whenever there will be um, prolonged um, less exposure from the sun or prolonged uh, rainy seasons, or sometimes there is, uh, in the case of light intensity, sometimes there are shadings or uh, there are typhoons that the, our seaweeds were not exposed to sunlight. There will be a higher tendency that these seaweeds will, will experience or will encounter ice ice disease. So basically, what happened here is that seaweed exudes, exudes organic substances, which is mucilaginous in nature and with the presence of opportunistic bacteria in the water column aggravates the whitening of the branches. So as a defense mechanism for the seaweed, basically uh, kapag uh, mababa yung temperature, mababa yung salinity and light intensity, um, mechanism ng seaweed is to uh, exude organic substances that are basically mucilaginous, parang uh, slimy siya. And uh, due to the presence of opportunistic bacteria they will gather in this uh, mucus that will serve them uh, serve them as uh, environment suitable for them so that 
turns the thalli or the thallus of the seaweeds turns white. So basically that's the basic concept of the ice ice disease. And then we have also the Gracilaria being cultivated in the Philippines. It started in 1973 with about 17 known species. The uses of this one are basically food for human or shellfish, particularly ang abalone. Uh, if you have heard about abalone or lapas, this is basically one of their primary food for abalone. And also source of phycocolloid agar. So agar is basically just a most potent gel forming agent out of the three phycocolloids. So there are phycocolloids can be extracted from seaweeds no? uh, and agar is the most potent gel forming agent. So there. And then we also have the in seaweed farming we also cultivate caulerpa, no? specifically the caulerpa lenticifera was uh, the first species commercially cultivated in brackish water ponds in Mactan Island in the early 1950s. So this is basically again the first species commercially cultivated in brackish water fish ponds in Mactan. So that is Calerpa or otherwise known as green algae. So what are the suitable sites for cultivation of this kind of species? Um, it could either be in ponds, open lagoons or cages. So there, those are the different um, seaweeds that can be cultivated in, in our waters in the tropical regions. So um, another uh, very common um, form of culture structure in the mariculture are cage culture. So cage culture is just an enclosure with a bottom, excuse me. Again, um, cage culture is an enclosure with bottom and sides of netting or bamboo, okay? uh, whether floating at the surface or totally submerged. So it could either be floating at the surface or totally submerged. And then um, it was introduced in the Philippines by B4 in 1965. Take note of that. Again, cage culture uh, was introduced in the Philippines by B4, 1965. And then uh, again, the difference between cage culture and fish pen, uh, I mean fish pen and fish cage is that the cage has um, the netting both bottom and sides, whereas the fish pens, only the nettings are, are in, located in the sides. The bottom are basically just the surface bottom of the ocean or the, the seafloor. No? So the first species cultivated in, in this cage culture in the Philippines was Cyprinus calopio. It was introduced in Hong Kong 1915. So this is basically the first cage culture in Laguna de Bay. So there are also other uh, type of cage, cage cages in aquaculture um, utilizing bamboos as frames and just uh, simply net nettings in the sides. And sometimes they used um, Instead of bamboos, they used for those uh, advanced aquacultures, they used these blue drums as floaters and framings. So that's cage culture. And then uh, we have here a uh, continuation of the cage culture. So in 1990, uh, shallow marine bays and estuaries, particularly in Lingayen Gulf area, um, where where uh, cage culture will were already deployed no um, in 1996 the first Norwegian cage for salmon in Swal Bay Pangasinan was also deployed so this is basically the actual picture of that uh, Swal Bay Norwegian cages in Pangasinan so aquaculture system of the millennium so this was considered as the aquaculture system of the millennium. It requires low feed inputs, uh, low uh, energy inputs and powers and so on and so forth and uh, farming practice with high economic returns because uh, basically hindi ka na laging mag uh, babago bago ng mga framings like uh, pagpapalit ng mga um, baboos for framing. So these are basically um, high yielding or high economic returns type of cultures itong mga Norwegian cages so these are basically what we call as Norwegian cages this is 
um, mainly composed of the high polyethylene or high density polyethylene plastics no mga PVCs to sila or HDPEs right and uh, in Chargao we have here we have what we call as the Norwegian Mariculture uh, sponsored by the Department of Trade and Industry so basically what are Norwegian Mariculture these are mod modern fish cages and mariculture parts are mostly made of high density polyethylene or HDPE materials because of its versatility, relative simplicity in the performance in various farming operations, and comparatively limited investment capital required. So this is basically the most popular and most um, uh, most used type of material for Norwegian fish gates. So this was sponsored by the DTI through their uh, shared service facilities pro program. And it was given to Srigao State College of Technology, my um, previous institution. No? Um, this is worth around 800,000 pesos and it could uh, uh, store about um, 50,000 fingerlings and could yield for about 25,000 kilos per uh, cycle of culture. So this is very high yielding facility. And then um, we have also the fish pen. So what are fish pen? As what was described earlier, in comparison with the fish cages, fish pens are just pen um, fixed enclosure with which the bottom is the bed of the water body. So technically, this is uh, di di this makes it different from uh, fish cages because the fish pen is basically utilizing the bottom of the fish, the water body. It began in 1968 as an experimental venture of the Philippines uh, before in the freshwater lake of Laguna de Bay. So as you can see here, these are fish pens, no? uh, utilizing uh, wood, stick, wood sticks or bamboo sticks. No? And uh, the first species cultured in fish pens was milkfish. No? This is the most important freshwater pen culture in the world pen culture of milkfish so that's fish pen and then we have here the fish tanks so the fish tanks are basically could either be concrete as you can see here in this picture it could either be also a fiberglass no this is a fiberglass and then sometimes it could be a glass for those ornamental fishes so what do you mean by ornamental fishes ornamental fishes are basically decorative fishes no mga pets and then uh, sometimes aquaculture uh, fish tanks could either be just um pond lining mats no parang ginagawan lang siya ng mga frames diyan tapos may mga mats for lining so these are different uh, types of fish tanks this is in a land based facility no hindi siya doon sa open water talaga land based facility itong mga fish fish tanks so fish tanks um, allows aquaculturists to exert relatively high degree of environmental control over parameters. So that's the reason why most of the experimental researches were conducted in um, using fish tanks. No? Uh, sooner you will have your thesis, especially when you deal with uh, bioassays, uh, fish nutrition, and other experimental um, researches, you will have to utilize the fish tanks. Okay, so those are fish tanks. And then we have here also the word aquaponics. I think this is not new to you, no? Aquaponics is just a food production system that couples the aquaculture or raising aqua aquatic animals in tanks with hydroponics or cultivating plants in the water. So uh, this basically um, allows the nutrient-rich aquaculture water is fed to the hydrophically grown plants wherein uh, the nitrifying bacteria converts ammonia into nitrates to make it more um, to make it uh, suitable for plants to make it available for plants so uh, a simple schematic diagram for aquaponics is this one so you can see here the food supply for fish we are giving them fed feeds to our uh, aquatic organisms so the feeds will uh, be eaten by the fish and uh, Later, they will excrete these 
feeds as a form of um, droppings no? containing ammonia ammonia droppings uh, ammonia containing droppings pass through the pump no ito ito yung kukuha ng no ng mga droppings dito siya papasok sa pump na to and then later on it will pump up upwards and then it will settle here in the plant tank in this plant tank there are nitrosomonas basically this nitrosomonas bacteria converts ammonia to nitrite so basically may mga nitrosomonas dito sometimes in the form of i mean they are settling in in the water in the soils in the substrates of these plants so kasi kapag ammonia uh, harmful yan sa fish and then uh, to make it less harmful and to make it available for the plants it has to be converted to nitrite and to and then from nitrite it will then again be converted to nitrate through the help of nitrobacter bacteria and nitrospira bacteria so take note of that i have and included this in your google form and then uh, upon converting the nitrate to nitrate it will then again be uh, assimilated by plants thus depolluting the water returning the fish to the tank so basically uh, the process goes on no um, again from the feeds assimilated by fish uh, excreted the ammonia and then this ammonia will be uh, pumped up and then uh, will this ammonia will then be converted to nitrite by nitrosomonas and then from nitrite will be then again converted to nitrate by the nitrobacter bacteria and nitrospira bacteria and then uh, assimilated these nitrates will be assimilated by plants and return the pollution free water in the fish tanks so you're also uh, allowing air pumps here to promote oxygen or dissolve oxygen in the water level water column so this is the simple um, uh, figure or simple explanation for aquaponics system so I hope that's clear now let's proceed to the integrated multi-trophic aquaculture so this is a more complicated uh, way of um, aquaculture wherein you are utilizing different species diverse species no um from aquatic plants to fin fish to mollusks to crustaceans so as you can see here in this picture you can see um, a fish cage filled with fin fishes and other fin fishes here and uh, aquatic plants here and also um bivalves here which are filter feeder bivalves and here also filter feeder bivalves and uh, the bottom we have the crustaceans and uh, some other bulbs. so later we will discuss that in the next slide so what is IMTA? IMTA is just the cultivation of the fed aquaculture species um, it may either be fin fish or shrimp with organic extractive aquaculture species um, like uh, shellfish, herbivore fish and inorganic extractive aquaculture species like seaweeds to create a balanced ecosystems no? so this is a diverse or very diverse culture system wherein you are culturing fish or shrimp you're culturing um, herbivorous fish um, shellfish and also culturing uh, seaweeds as well to create a very balanced and a pollute um, pollution free environment so what's the purpose of this IMTA IMTA is to promote uh, environmental sustainability or biomitigation so to prevent um, polluted water from from uh, harming other organisms it has to be converted to other forms or otherwise assimilated by other organisms for it to be once again converted or um, be available for other organisms so this is a environmental sustainability another um, purpose of IMTA is economic stability no product diversification risk reduction so economic stability meaning to say uh, you're not just um, producing one type of species but also but also producing other species that may be um, maybe very significant in addressing uh, food security 
and risk reduction meaning to say risk reduction that you are uh, minimizing the risk of the disease occurrence or pathogenic attacks because you are um, uh, utilizing or you are basically converting this waste into other forms that will be available for other organisms and also shows social acceptability for better management practices so para hindi ka na mahirapan mag produce ng uh, mag irate mag uh, clean uh, other species will do that for you no? like for example seaweeds could produce oxygens in the process of photosynthesis and uh, some other organisms here basically cleans the environment through um, grazing no? So those are some of the benefits that will sa save you um, costs, maintenance, better management practice. So that's those are the three um, uh, beneficial factors for IMTA. So as I've said, we will be explaining that. The concept of that is this figure. So we have here the feed for aquaculture species, particularly the, the finfish. So you are giving them diets or feeds the finfish and then this will be excreted by the in the form of uh, droppings which is rich in ammonia so we call them as large POM or large particulate organic matter and then this large particulate organic matter will then be uh, eaten by these benthic organisms like um, these are basically sea cucumbers, lobsters, and other sicil organisms. And then for those small particulate organic matters, this will be um, utilized or this will be assimilated by shellfishes. So small particulate organic matters will be filtered by uh, shellfishes, be becomes um, which basically promotes no a healthier, a cleaner water column. And then for uh, dissolved inorganic nutrients, it will be um, assimilated by uh, what we call this, the inorganic seaweeds or the seaweeds itself. So basically, all of the waste will be utilized by one organism. The waste from one organism will be utilized as uh, an input for another organism. Also, this, this um, large invertebrates basically produce um, uh, dissolved in organic nutrients no? which will be assimilated by, by seaweeds as our main autotrophic or main autotrophic organism so this is the very simple explanation for the IMTA and then uh, we have here the recirculating aquaculture system so the recirculating aquaculture system basically is just a technology for fish farming for other aquatic organisms by using or reusing the water in the production so this is very relevant for those areas that uh, basically uh, being deprived by water supply you know yung mga naka experience ng mga water crisis and wants to deal with aquaculture this is their way you no know? this is their method of culture system we're in the waste of uh, the wastewater will be converted or will be cleaned again again and then will be converted and will be uh, resupplied to the fish tank so the basic concept is this no uh, first is we have here again a fish culture tank and then uh, all the feces or all of the droppings and organic materials will be uh, diverted or drained to the me mechanical filter and the waste of so waste solids will be uh, extracted from there and then uh, we have here already a clean water but also but they still have the microbial organisms no so we have another chamber which will filter no we call this as biological filter it has the organisms necessary organisms converting this or um prohibiting these organisms from harming our our uh, cultured species no so this is microbial filter and then the waste solids will be again uh, extracted from there no? and then uh, it will have to go through to the water inputs which is already been oxygenated through this uh, aerator here so it will once again be 
supplied to the fish tank. So this is a very basic definition of the recirculating aquaculture system. You could also utilize other form of uh, mechanical filtration like uh, in the mechanical filtration you could use sand and gravel or uh, others use charcoal or yung tinatawag nila na carbon filtration. And then biological filter, um, yung iba gumagamit ng mga oysters. Um, others used um, muscles for biological filter and then just simply oxygenation. Others also um, add yung mga UV filtration to, to prevent microbial organisms from harming the culture units. So those are the different culture systems in aquaculture. No? So I hope um, everybody have stayed up to this moment. No? And um, I have already posted a task in your Google Classroom wherein you are tasked to, um, where is this? You are tasked to answer this post test. So in the post test, this is a 25 items. No? Um, make sure to log in your emails, your institutional emails, and submit on or before October 10. So this has already been posted, so I hope um, you will respond to these um, items. And uh, again, thank you very much for join. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for staying up to this moment. And I hope to see you again in our future discussion. So those are all about the types and culture systems, or the types of culture systems in aquaculture. So again, thank you, and see you in the next video.